So we're recording and we can get started. So um, thank you all, it's been a while and thank you so much for your patience, Paul and Marlena. <laughs> really greatly appreciate it. Sorry, we had to keep changing times. Um, all right. So I'm gonna just start off with some of our business. I don't have the minutes of the last meeting um, to share. So I don't even know if they've actually been drafted yet. So um, we can put that off till the next time. Um, are there any updates? I don't have any from Pelham other than rah rah. They're continuing to cheer us on. And the Great. only update I have on is more on the joint powers um, piece, and it's still haven't heard back from Alan. Has the um, at one point I think you were going to talk to the mayor to sort of see if we could move him along. Uh, were you able to do that? Nope, I don't remember getting to that point, but it's a good point to be at. Yes. I think because I think we're there. Um, I think yeah. we really need to move this along with with that piece. Yeah. So what that about the uh, what about Amherst? I think at the we moment are, it, yeah, our legal counsel already responded. Yeah. We're waiting on really. Oh, and a while we're ago. waiting on Alan to respond. It, there was there was confusion over what he was responding to. He responded to the CCA when he should have been responding to the joint powers agreement. And then it kind of went went dark. But we shouldn't digress here. This is yep. a different topic. That was just yep. a quick update. Right. So, um, Darcy, go ahead. You're mm -hmm. muted. Could we could we see the Amherst lawyers' responses so that you we have can... you all have had them? Yeah. It's been so. It's been quite some been time. time. Yeah. I'll send it again, but you've had it. Mm -hmm. You have had it. Okay. It's been. It's just been ages mm -hmm. since. And it was back that much either. It's no, not it's that very much little. Either. Yeah, that's why it's yeah. so puzzling. Mm -hmm. There's so little to respond to. So I don't want to derail us on this. I mean, yeah. we know yeah. this is outstanding. We know we've got to deal with it. We've so um, I'll send it again if you want, Darcy. But it's been it, it definitely went to the group. So um, are there any other updates? OK, so move us along then to our discussion. Welcome, Paul and Marlena. Thank you again so much. Um, and I think I want to actually um, turn this over to you at this point, because I feel like you're guiding us through this process. So um, I know we um, gave you some feedback on the outreach and education plan. So I think that was the last interaction that we had at our last meeting. Excellent. Yes. Yeah, so we have. Um... We have some slides. If it's all right, I'll share my screen and we'll walk we'll walk through those. I'll tell you actually before we launch into them that a few of them are slides you've seen before. We've included them really just as a reminder, just to not spend time on it, but just be sure we're all grounded and back in the, the same spot. So um, I'm going to share my screen now. And, uh, all right. Can folks see the slide there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So the first thing, just a, a just quick reminder here of the, the aggregation timeline and where we are. So we're over all on the left, kind of in the planning stage, and we're working towards as a first milestone, a public review of the aggregation documents, which is required by statute. We need to make the documents available to the citizens, give them an opportunity to comment on it. Once we, once we have the documents done and go through that step, then we can file them with the Department of Public Utilities. Um, then this kind of a repeat here, this first milestone, just kind of what, what I said a second ago. So we draft these documents, you give us input, we approve them, and then we have that final presentation. So those key documents are the education and outreach plan. And you've already, as you said at the beginning, Stephanie, you guys have exchanged drafts there. You guys have provided some uh, great contributions that to that and just a few questions to resolve on that, which we'll go through in a second. Um, and then the other ones are the aggregation plan itself, the opt-out mailing materials, and the model contract. Um, Marlena, do you want to speak to the education and outreach plan just now from this slide, or do you want to do it from a subsequent one? Um, well, actually, what I was hoping to do is just to let you guys know that I read through it. It looks great. Um, I've formatted it so it all kind of looks like the format matches. And then I have just a few questions that came into my head as I was reading through um, what you guys put together. They're very minor, 
and I've embedded them in the document and I'd like to flip that back to you. I think the easiest thing might be for you to just, you know, look at those questions and, and resolve them in, in the body of the document, if that makes sense. Sure, we can do that. Okay, great. All right. So then um, what we'll focus on for the rest of the time is these other documents here. Um, and there are just some questions that which we, some of which we, we've raised before, but are kind of embedded into these documents. We, we talked through them a bit last time. We sent, we sent you, I think, to a, a, a Word document that describes the decision some. Want to go through them now in this call, if we can see where you guys are on these questions. Um, insofar as you're able to answer them now, great. We'll reflect them in the draft uh, aggregation plan, which we'll flip to you next week. Um, insofar as you can't, these questions still will take more time to resolve. What we'll do is we'll just we'll send you the draft plan anyway, but with just placeholders around these questions. Um, but it's unlike the outreach plan where the best way to deal with the questions is to see the document and insert the answers that works there. The aggregation plan is, is mostly a, like a regulatory document. So, you know, it's not all that it's, it's kind of, we find it more efficient just to talk about these questions separately um, the way we've been doing it here. So the first one um, <laughs> relates to our earlier discussion is the 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 status of the um, the joint powers entity um, because we're assuming that you're gonna that it's gonna be that entity that's the entity that files the aggregation plan with the DPU and we would draft the aggregation plan that way. Um, but if that's far off in the future, you might want to decide to file under the MOU you have, which we can also do. Um, it just means we would just write up the document slightly differently. Do you have a sense of a timeline on the joint powers entity? I mean, I'll say my sense of it is that it's pretty close once we get the lawyers to, to agree to the final language. Right. I mean, we, but we've been waiting on this for months and I think right. we just really need to get our executives to push to have it resolved. In fact, I think it should come from them now. Like we should, forward them the last draft that we had and ask them to forward it along to the legal counsel respectively. Cause I think we'll even send it to Rick again. Um, and if it comes from them, I think it, there might be more push. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's, it's really surprising that Alan hasn't done anything because he's normally more responsive than this. But I mean, as I recall, anybody else correct me that once we get that finalized, um, then we should be ready to go. I mean, it, it once it's finalized, then it will trigger a bunch of stuff. It once trigger, it's right, yeah, you know, JPA will will trigger forming the board, et cetera. And I have to go back and refresh myself. But Paul, you're looking at how many months out still before this goes to DPU? Well, um, so I would say, you know. You know, probably two months. So we we need to have a, you know, mostly because of this public hearing. So, um, but why don't I write it? It sounds like if this makes sense to you guys, I'm going to write it. The, I'm going to send you the draft aggregation plan, which assumes the joint powers entity is in place. Mm -hmm. And if it turns out we get to the point where we're ready to file the aggregation plan, but the joint powers entity isn't ready. We could change the and you want to go forward. We could change the aggregation plan. So, but I'll I'll just make the assumption that we're going to have that you'll have the joint powers entity if that makes sense to you. I think so. I think I, so too. I like it too. I think I do. I'm I'm thinking about the timeline and what the gating issues are, and I think having the option so that this does not become a gating issue is really a good idea. <laughs> okay. Um. We'll do it that way. Um, so the next question is, um, I'll just actually raise these questions here and then we have slides, I think on each of them as we go ahead. So the next one which you talked about a bit before was the program structure, which is two key questions there. One is how many options you want to have and then whether the standard or default option has additional renewable energy in it. 
those are the key decisions for this stage of things. Um, so there's that one. Then the next question is, what, what do you want to name these different options? We need to put the actual names in the aggregation plan. Um, and then we should talk for a minute or two more on the operational adder. I think you've already given us good guidance on that, but I just want to, as long as we're talking, I wanted to confirm. So let's move ahead and talk about the program structure questions. So here's um, an example here of a, what's a typical structure, which is a three product offering with a standard option that has some additional renewable energy above the minimum, and then two options from there. One, the ability to go up to 100% renewables, which would be at an extra cost. And then the other option would be to go down to zero extra renewables for a lower cost. That's the common structure for green aggregations, but not everybody does it that way. And not every aggregation has additional renewable energy in the standard. So that's the, you know, the key set of questions for you here. You want to address them right now, Paul? Yeah, if, if we could. So, um, so, Paul, my understanding, because I think we talked about this a while ago, and I thought we came up with four options and a fourth that included local. That's my recollection. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. That's my recollection, too. And it's like we don't have the local one defined yet, but we need it in there. And we may not even trigger it right away, but we need it in there, my understanding, is so that we can go to it. Got it. Okay. Um, so it, it, that's great. So it sounds like you, you guys are... Your you mem your memory is better than mine, and that we're you're we're further resolved on further along on this. So, and it's if I just confirm, it's the four options, and it's additional, but it's with additional renewable energy in that default option. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, so great. I, it, I mean, if you take, you know, when people are selling residential solar now, Paul, as you may well know that. that the good, better, best. So the budget is good. Um, the standard is better and the hundred percent is best. And then the fourth one is local. That's the mm -hmm. difference between a uh, hundred um, percent and number four, I think. I'm just, I'm asking that as a question, not a statement, but uh, is that what you're thinking, Chris? Yeah, the, the local, it, it gives us the opportunity to try to be creative. It's really the creative option where we can, direct money towards local measures and, and programs, uh, extra renewable energy from locals. It could be, uh, you know, alternative energy credits and stuff that are coming from people putting in heat pumps locally, yet to be defined. But yes, it was, um, it's kind of that creative piece. And, and it might Paul, cost a premium. Yeah, well, I have a question about that as well, but, um... Before, uh, just Paul, one clarification. Um, like everybody knows that solar is the lowest cost electricity generating source being built today. Are like what wouldn't 100% renewable? I, I don't keep track of this anymore. I'm just asking yeah. not to delve into it, but aren't the renewable options cheaper than the standard options these days? Uh, or the whatever they call it, yeah. Um they're 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 not so there there is a, an additional premium for the um for the additional renewables the way it the way these products are structured um they begin always with basic electricity which is just includes the all, everything that's required but nothing more than that mm -hmm. and there might be a cost for that so we'll just say for a round number that's 10 cents a kilowatt hour Mm -hmm. Then if you want to add additional renewable energy, you're purchasing um, uh, the RECs associated with that additional renewable energy, and there's a cost always for those RECs. So, Thank you. Um, now I get it. That exp I, I was curious about how we were treating the RECs, but we're, we're buying them. Yep, correct. Yep. Okay. And um, uh, the budget option, is that the, um, the, sta the standard offer? I, I don't know the right term for it, but... The, the, um, is that the same as the state's, you know, or as National Grid or ever sources base offering? Okay. Yes, exactly. Right. In terms of renewable energy content, it's the same. 
the price will differ and the term may differ, but the, the renewable energy content is exactly the same. And if we don't put the fourth one in, in the original plan, then we lose the opportunity to do it in the future. Is that also, do I remember that correctly? Um, correct. And though we can, we can put it in the plan, we can put it in the plan, get approval for it, but if it, we were not ready with it, but it, so that's what you need to, to, sorry, to preserve the ability to offer it, you need to put it in the plan. Right. But it doesn't have to be available right out of the gate. So as Chris was you can have it in the plan, but launch with just the three available at that time, as long as we've said, we're hoping to plan to offer this fourth one down the road. Pel the town of Pelham is good with this, these, the four plans uh, outlined here. <laughs> Uh, Darcy has her hand raised. Yeah, <clears throat> I just have a question about the 100% renewable option. Um, mm -hmm. Is it possible to provide that using just New England class one recs? Yes, and that's what we're um, exact. Yes, we yes, it is. And that's what we're assuming for the extra recs in both the 100% renewable and also any extra recs in the standard we're assuming they would be um, class one recs. The plan won't have to specify that. We'll, to maximize your flexibility, we'll say it could come from class one recs or it could come from others, um, but we're, it's certainly possible to do it with class ones. That's what most communities do. And that's what we're assuming is what you would actually do. Isn't, isn't that what we would insist on? Well, yes. I mean, I would think so in the design of your, in the design of your, uh, the products as you launch them. So maybe you're saying, or I'm wondering, are you, are you asking, well, why do we even want to say that we might do something else in the plan? Why don't we just say class ones? Um, we absolutely could do that. And it's likely the case that you would never want to do anything different. So there would be no harm to presenting it as just class ones. The only reason I'm suggesting maybe you might wanna give yourself a little more flexibility there in the plan document is that who knows what additional options might come along down the road. You know, Some new kind of wreck gets formed. Um, you might wanna have the flexibility to start using that rather than, and not be limited to the class ones and not having to get your plan changed in order to offer something different. So stepping back a bit, the aggregation plan, the way we think of that is it's an authorization document. It, 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 it articulates what you're allowed to do. Then when it comes to implementation, you can choose to do anything, any subset of things that are within the plan. Um, you're not obligated to do everything that's in there. So we would, there is some benefit to giving yourself a little flexibility on this rec question in the plan, but there's certainly nothing wrong with just committing to class ones now, if that's the decision you want to make and are sure you're not gonna to wanna to change it later. Do, do the staff have any opinions about that? I would, um, I would strongly like to stay flexible. I hate to find ourselves someplace where we're kicking ourselves and not having the ability to, to uh, adjust at some point in the future. And Paul, I have a question. So with the uh, standard green and 100% renewable, when you're talking about RECs, are you basically talking about renewable energy RECs? Uh, not so much alternative energy or, yeah. So those, the extra ones, so there are other RECs out there already and we don't, we don't know when there's new ones gonna be coming out. Um, that might that might be something to fit in here. So it makes a lot of sense to me to keep it open open ended. I would agree. Yeah, yeah Pelham agrees. All right, and then and then just to um, address it a little bit more, the way it works in practice, just to be sure we've explained that, is we put in the plan now. Say we go with this more flexible approach that you might use probably, you know, class one recs or some other kind of recs that the communities choose. That's in your plan. Once your plan is approved, we'll go out to the market, we'll get bids for supply and we'll make, get bids for recs. 
And it's at that moment that you'll decide what exactly is going to be in the program when the in the products when it launches. So the the decision you, you still get to decide, and the decision about what to include comes not now in the plan, but right before the launch of the program. And then you get to decide exactly what what recs you want. Does that seem to make sense? Yes. Yeah. 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 It would be it would be nice if, since this is the founding one of the founding documents if it's somehow a preference could be stated in there for for local meaning New England or something I don't know but um, but yeah. We can certainly do that. So we can say in the document we'll, we'll find some language to indicate that it's your you know your strong your expectation it's going to be class one Rex, you prioritize Rex from New England, but also, you know, build in some flexibility just in case some other option develops that you find decide is even more attractive later, but aren't, it's not before us now. So we can't say that exact thing. That sounds good. Um, excellent. So the next question and is the names for these different products. Um, and forgive me. So, did, did you did you guys decide on this too, and did I lose track of that as well, or did you not decide on this question? I don't think we decided on this question yet. Yeah, I can't remember. I think we discussed it, but we didn't decide. Yeah. Um, All right. Maybe the thing. So, let's me ask how you want to proceed. Do you want to bat it around a bit now and see if you can narrow it? down i mean maybe even um see if there's a sense of the group of what your likely first choice is and then i can we can put that in the plan document with the ability once you've seen it to say yeah we, we changed your mind we want something different it's a decision that has to be made like over the next month but it doesn't have to be made on this call I have a gut instinct response just with the, what's provided here as options. Um, yeah, I, I do too. So I, I think we could discuss it. Is there anyone who thinks we shouldn't? I think we should discuss it. I, I'm terrible at it. So you guys are probably going to pick them here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good at picking names like this either. But, um, but of the ones we have suggested here. Um, so you'll yep. need four, right? Four names? Yep. Yes, Yes. exactly. So should we go column by column? Yeah, why don't we just start with the, the first? Um, Chris, do you want to go with uh, with your gut instinct for the first one? Uh, how about you, Stephanie? You just, you're talking right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, I'm fine with it. I'll, I'll, I'll give you mine. No, okay. Well, I mean, I have, I have the three that I'm thinking, but... Um, yeah. So I could just I I could just say all three that I'm thinking. So for the default automatic enrollment, I was thinking um, actually VGE Green for 100% renewable VGE Plus, and for the least expensive option VGE Basic, and then I would say for the local option VGE Local. Those are the ones that I have in my head. So. I like the, how short they all are. I would have gone VGE standard green, but I can see just VGE green. Hmm. Yeah, actually, I would have gone standard green, 100% green, and VGE basic. Okay, we're agreeing on the basic so far. <laughs> um, Tom, yeah. you want to weigh in? I don't want to cause a uh, a riff, but I like your name. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again, Tom. I, I like your names. Stephanie's? Okay. Yes, yeah, Stephanie's. And, and, and it makes a nice bingo card, too, right up to me. <laughs> um, I, I prefer uh, Chris's suggestions because they're more um, descriptive. Yeah, I would say that if I were somebody, you know, looking at the array and trying to figure out what they really mean, um, the standard would help, um, 
describe the VGE green doesn't say that that's the standard. Um, so yeah. And it plus, um, I'm not, have we, have we decided that we're having a 100% option? I think we did, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So that, that is more descriptive and people who are, you know, are, are first adopter types, they're going to go straight for the hundred percent, right? Or maybe they'll go for local, who knows? Okay. Well, so we, are, we may ahead. not have local to start out with. Okay. And Andra, you want to weigh in? Well, I was actually thinking that plain old standard would be good because um, people think that it costs more for green um, already, right? So I guess the compromise is standard green. Um, I wish we could call the least expensive option dirty. <laughs> I, don't oh, I don't know i'll be able to get that one to fly <laughs> i guess i'm curious paul if you um know um you know have you got any ideas of whether the names matter at all I do think they do. And I mean, I do think a good way to to make the decision is to put yourselves in the shoes of a citizen who may not be as familiar with these terms, who's presented with these choices, and what names you feel might do the best to help them understand what the differences are. If I could also offer, um to the question of the name for the least expensive, Natick calls theirs Natick Basic slash Brown, which is a bit awkward, but they had the same inclination. They wanted to offer it, but they wanted to make, you know, not, they wanted to tarnish it a little bit. So it's this rather <laughs> awkward Basic slash Brown, but that's what they use. Um, and yes, I, I would concur with Paul that I do think the names matter there will be members of your communities who are not interested in the environmental aspects of this program, but you would like them, I would imagine, to be enrolled and to enroll in the default rather than immediately going for the basic. And in, in that way, some of them can be very sensitive to the green naming in the, in the default if it just has green. Um, that pushes some people right to the basic because they feel there's an agenda that they don't want to participate in. I'm not saying we should obscure the sustainability focus of the program, just uh, relaying how people react to names. They, they do matter. Um, and a lot of people take great comfort in knowing what most people do. That's the other piece I wanted to add. And standard feels it feels like the reliable, common option. A very frequent question I get on the phone is, well, what are most people in? Is standard what most people in? It sounds like that's what most people would do. If that's what most people will do, I'll do that. And so I do think for, this, for the default, you wanna create a name that creates that, that feeling of community comfort um, uh, and, 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 and that, that, that that's, the, that's a really safe place to be. And Marlene, if I could ask, um, with that issue in mind, are you suggesting that the name that that would lead towards just standard in the name, or would standard green still accomplish the goal of indicating to people what most other people are doing? I think as I, I like personally, which I don't have a dog in this fight, but having the word standard in the name, as long as it's a part of the name, I do think can help accomplish both of the things that I'm mentioning, which is um, making it clear, yeah, this is probably the one most people are thinking, you know, most people are enrolling in, and that is the power of the program is, is your default, like we know that, 
Um, so it gives them that sense of, okay, this is a safe place to go. I don't have to question. I don't have to think about the other options. And then also it, um, I mean, you have the green in there. Some people will be like, uh, but standard at least makes them feel that it's, it's, I don't know, not a scary thing, not a threatening thing, maybe not something they have to think about. I, I'm wondering if we, if we went with standard green, then I like the idea of not going, of going with the least expensive option as <laughs> basic brown, not basic slash brown, but just basic brown. So it sort of works with standard green, basic brown. Like, I feel like there's more of a consistency there in the naming. So I would, I would switch <laughs> uh, my, um, to the, the VGE standard green or standard. I mean, I think I would be comfortable with either one. So what do people think about that first default automatic enrollment naming the, of the first two? Which is would you there, go with? Is there no, no green in the standard offer now? I'm sorry, I'm not up on this stuff. And I know you just showed something on it, Paul, but is it truly all brown? I guess my question. But, no. No, you mean the least expensive option? That's, yeah, you that's mean the least expensive. Yeah, no, that would be a certain percentage. I mean, Paul, do you know what the RPS standard is right now? Yes, it's 20% 20, 20 class one. So yes, you're the the stand the the least expensive. It's the has the minimum amount of green, but it doesn't have zero green. But it's basically brown. <laughs> that's where I'm going. <laughs> yeah. 80, 80 we can call brown. it that basically brown. Um <laughs> I, I just have one thought. I have one thought that if have you seen in um, you know where it's offered on a website that you list the names and then in parentheses after it you could say twenty percent, you know, forty percent, a hundred percent, and I don't know what we'd put after local, but um, so that people would really be able to see how much what it actually means, how much renewables in each offering. Um, yes, yes. Ab absolutely. Sorry, Marlena, yeah. go ahead. Yes, yeah, so the, the website actually, and the letters that go out have to have the full renewable content, um, both the additional and the different components of the RPS. So all of that would be visible. Um, you would have the additional voluntary renewable amount, and then you would have the full RPS amount, which is it's the 20% for class ones this year, but it's 51% total. So um, all of that goes in the letter and on the website. What is 51%? So to be clear, the, the RPS is comprised of different types of renewables, not just class ones. Oh, I see. The class one component is 20%. But there's another 31% that we're required to represent on the website and in letters. So the public is able to see both the renewable, uh, the voluntary renewable component that Valley Green Energy includes in any program offerings that have voluntary renewable energy added. And also they will see what the RPS amount is for each. And that's a DPU requirement. And what, so the RPS basically say 51%? That is how it, it's presented to the public. Yes, yeah. that's the DPU requirement. Now, it didn't used to be, but they're now requiring aggregations to follow the same rules as electricity suppliers. So the, the way we do it, it's a table and the public would see, you know, uh, a row, so you would have like this, this table here with the, imagine the names across the tops and then going down in rows, you would have one row, that's the voluntary amount you've added, whatever that is, percentage me, for each. I'll interrupt you for a second, Marlene. Should I just bring one up and then you can look? Oh, yeah, 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 if you people. wouldn't mind, yes. So I'll stop sharing. What's a good community to use, the best community as an example? Um, let me think. Maybe Acton? Let me take a quick look at theirs, just so you can see. So you know what the public's going to see. 
Um, yeah, so Acton. Right. Acton's one way to do it. And, and this can be done, these tables can be done in different ways. So with Acton, well, once he has it up. Yeah, sorry, let, let me go back. I'm gonna share this. So this is, first I'm gonna show the home page. Okay, so this is, this so is that choice. Yeah. Then we have the home page here. This is how it's explained there. Yeah, and so this, just to clarify, this is, sorry, Paul, this is the home page. And so here we have an abbreviated description for each, which is I think kind of where you were going initially. So for each of them, it says how much premium renewables from the Northeast. Now these numbers are inclusive of the RPS amount. That's how Acton wanted to do it. Um, so this is kind of just like the teaser, but then once you go to the uh, options and pricing page, so here each option has its own table and we can, we can look at, um, probably look at Worcester's in a moment just to show a different way of doing it. But these, each option has its own table. So here we have standard and you can see they're on the cusp of a price change. But as you look down the table, you'll see the renewable energy content part of it, where you have one row that says from renewable energy sources in the Northeast added by Acton. And then you have renewable energy sources required by state law. And then you have additional renewable energy required by state law. So this is, this is how we now need to do it in order to meet the DPU's requirements. But you can see also that it's very, very clear the voluntary amount that's uh, added by the community's program, which is a nice thing. I don't understand the wording of um, additional renewable energy required by state law. Yep, that's the RPS components. But why is that 31%? So the, the state law, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to distract everybody with this. The state law, the RPS, the Renewable Portfolio Standard, requires that all electricity suppliers have to include a minimum amount of electricity right. from renewable sources of different kinds. Right. So the 20% is the mass class one component. The 30% is other types of renewables that are also required by state law. Oh. And, they're and they're very confusing. If you actually dive into it, they're not just recs. There's, there's assumptions. There's, it, it's a bunch of stuff. Really hard to parse out. Yes. Uh, and is it, it is it required to provide that line in the table? I mean, we that's have very to, confusing. Yes, we have to provide the full RPS information. And so when I draft your letter, the the letter that's going to go out to the public that we have to, that's part of what we're drafting right now, you're going to see this in that letter. Can but you give me that? I'm sorry. Is, is that the RPS or is that is that yes. some other requirement? And that part oh, of the, the RPS? RPS. Part of yes. the RPS. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. That's very confusing. Yeah, I I never heard of that either. Uh, could you give an example of where that energy would come from? The thirty one percent. Yes. When I I can give you some of the examples. So. One chunk of it, and it comes from a bunch of different things, which adds to the complexity, but one chunk of it is um, clean energy from older projects. So the RPS if for class one, it has to be both renewable, wind, solar, that kind of thing, but also built after a certain date. That's RPS class one. There's also RPS class two, which is mm -hmm. projects that are older than that, built before that date. So that's in this 31%. Also in this 31%, believe it or not, is um, trash to energy, which is where there's the three and a half percent trash to energy requirement by state law. It is renewable. It's not very clean, but it's part of the state renewable energy requirements. So yeah. that's there. Um, you know, I did a, just a quick look up on Mass, just Google Massachusetts RPS categories and the thing that Google pops up right away includes a CES-E, nuclear and large hydro, RPS class two, hydroelectric landfill gas, RPS class two, waste energy, trash burning facilities. That's kind of the cleanest I've ever seen it listed. <laughs> the least so um, 
is it possible to add information that helps people with their confusion so that it would say additional blah, blah, blah required by state law, for example? Yeah, um, I mean, you can put whatever you want on a website, right? Okay, a website huge. You. you can put links to other places. Sure. Yep. Okay. Thanks. So I'm I'm really conscious of the time and I feel like we're we're sort of getting derailed here. Um, Sorry so, about that. No, 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 it's fine. I, I just want to, um, so, so we have two options. Either we could go a little longer if, you know, maybe we could add on a half hour if you folks are available and willing um, and if other people have the time or we end when we have to and we just schedule another meeting like next week. <laughs> so. Um, hey, uh, can I propose uh, that we just let um, uh, Paul and Marlene draft the plan um, and then we can see what it looks like because we'll have another bite at this apple, I think, from what I'm hearing. Yeah, agreed. Um, that seems fine. So that makes a bunch of sense. So just we'll give you another bite at the apple, but for the first bite at the apple, should we go with what names are you thinking or just based on today's discussion, what feels most comfortable with you as a starting point to, that you can then react to when you see it? So let's start with the default automatic. Are we okay with Valley Green Energy Standard Green? If anyone doesn't agree with that one, just raise your hand. That'll be the easiest way I can tell. Doesn't agree. Electronically. <laughs> Okay, so I think we're good with Valley Green Energy Standard Green. Okay, and then for the 100% renewable option, VGE 100% green. Anyone opposed to that name? Okay, not seeing any opposition there. And then for the least expensive option, I'm gonna put out my VGE basic brown. <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone anyone opposed to that? It's not opposed, but I have a question from Elena. Uh, so uh, the community that said basic slash brown, hmm. can you tell if that had any effect on who opted in and you know, or you know, did it kind of change the makeup of how people looked at it? I, I don't know that I would, I don't know that I would have any data. To, okay. Like, I don't, I don't know that I could say that. I could tell you the people who are looking for the cheapest are not dissuaded by names. I can tell you that. And Adele has her hand up. So Adele, do you want to speak to that? Uh, yeah, I would much prefer VGE budget than hmm. basic, um, or basic brown because it's not really brown, you know what I mean? Well, it's primarily, right. isn't it? Well, yeah, uh, it depends how you define it. And anyway, I, I, I would not, um, I would, I would not stand in the way. Uh, I would not block this decision, but I am expressing my opinion. Okay, we could what stick about, with VGE what about, basic. What about VGE left green? <laughs> <laughs> or minimal green <laughs> no i would say i would say no to that personally i just i just think you know standard green means it's acceptable just to give someone an option to kind of go minimum green then that becomes a standard green a lot of darcy has her hand up go ahead darcy yeah <clears throat> i would just agree with adele because i think you know, if you if we're looking at it from like a climate justice type perspective or just a low income perspective, you know, there are a lot of people that just need to have the lowest priced option. And yeah. and it feels like maybe the hundred percent renewable is going to be thirty one percent dirty anyway. Um so so I'm not sure this is the total, you know, like it's that descriptive of how different it is from the others. I'm I'm actually kind of a little this is all new to me, the 31% thing today. Okay. I'm gonna lower your hand, Darcy. Um what how about this? 
um, who who uh, Adele threw out VGE budget. So remember, who, this is just a placeholder for now. Right. Yep. Right. So so who is you know opposed to VGE budget? Raise your hand if you do not want to go that route. Okay, so I think we're going with VGE budget. And then for the local option for now, VGE local? Yeah. Okay. I think we're good. What does that mean? Excellent. Um, thank you for that. So. The next point is the adder. We I know that we did discuss it, so it, likely we don't need to spend more than a minute or two on this. I'll just repeat back my understanding, which is that you would like to collect the operational adder. You'd like to use it as you must for program related expenses, and you'd like to include the ability to use it for administrative expenses for the joint powers entity insofar as those relate to this program. Correct. All right, we'll draft it up that way. Excellent, so thank you for that. Um, so the next of the documents, which we just is worth um, mentioning for a minute here to discuss how best to proceed. So um, when the program goes forward and you get bids for supply, the towns or the J JPE actually will sign a contract with an electricity supplier for them to supply the electricity for the program. It's a no cost contract for the JPE. Um, it really just mostly sets out what are the obligations of the supplier and you know, how, you know that they're gonna provide electricity, they're gonna provide electricity, this many racks, their customer service requirements, all kinds of stuff like that. It's a big complicated, so it's no cost for the communities, but it's a big complicated electricity contract. Unfortunately, you have to include that contract in these documents that get reviewed by the public and get submitted by the to the DPU. I say unfortunately, not because there's any issue, any raises any issues with it, but just that we have to have this document in there. Because it's a document signed, they'll be signed by the JPE. It's customary at this stage to have the JPE's legal counsel take a look at it. And so I'm just gonna let let them bless it. There are challenges to that though, in that, not that there, there's a, a frame for that though, which is that this is a template contract and it's very much in your interest to use the template because that's a contract the suppliers are familiar with and they'll all bid to it. Insofar as you wanna stray from the template, some suppliers won't bid. If, for example, we just did a procurement for the city of Worcester, you know, the second biggest city in Massachusetts. They have their own Worcester version of the contract. It's not substantively different, but it just has says things the way Worcester likes to say things. But one of the suppliers wouldn't bid because it seemed too risky for them. It was different from what they were used to. They didn't understand all the little tweaks that Worcester wanted to make. So generally what we want here is to have legal counsel take a look at it, but have legal counsel say, yeah, yeah, this looks fine. What we don't want is for legal counsel to do what all lawyers do by instinct, which is you give them a document, they take a pen in their hand and they think of a hundred ways the document could be a little bit better here or there. And without question, every contract could be improved one way or the other, but edits other than there's this huge showstopper issue here are really not in the, the community's interest here. So the question is to present it to legal counsel with that kind of a framing. I will send you an email with the draft contract where I explain this, but I, I wanted to emphasize the messaging on it. So Paul, yeah. um, so there's, there's what the legal counsel is going to look at, and then there's uh, maybe more of a, uh, you know, a normal folks understanding of some of the things that it, that that's in there. Uh, for instance, kind of when the city goes out, goes out to bid, uh, in the past, although maybe we kind of flexed on this this last year, we've always said that the the bill has to be on the national grid bill. 
we don't want people getting two bills. We don't Correct. want a demand bill and the supply bill. Mm -hmm. So we just simply would say, no, we're not going to accept your bid if you won't do that. Um, the, on that title level, is there a way to identify what this basic contract spells out? I mean, what is it? Um, you know, it, it will require, it will result in A, B, C, and D. Is there any yeah. way we can kind of understand that? Yes, absolutely, Chris. That's a great question. I can, I can, as part of sending it, kind of summarize the most relevant terms, um, not make it a big, long thing, but highlight these mm -hmm. key points. And to your point on this one, for example, the contract does say just what you said. The billing is going to go through the utility. There's not going to be a separate bill here. Uh, and other, that's really the point of the contract, actually, is it establishes the program rules that the supplier is bound to. So it's all the things in your plan, you know, this many wrecks, billing through the utility, you know, 10 other mm -hmm. things like that. So I will do that. I will add a, a summary with the, when I send the contract, I'll give a little summary of those key, key terms. Okay. So are we gonna have to decide on for this model, what percentage of renewable we want in the standard? You do not. So you get to make that, you don't have to make that decision until right before you start when you see price bids and you actually see how much the additional renewable energy will cost. So, cause it will, we could tell you what it costs today but it's gonna be different by the time you go out to bid. So all those decisions get made later. This document's really just a template and those kind of items get filled in when you're ready to sign it, but not at this stage. So this is a document that really, you know, only a lawyer is going to want to read through and they're going to want to, you know, read through it with this pen in their hand and, you know, change which to that and add commas and stuff like that. So is, are, do we have a choice here uh, about whether it's council for the JPE or the communities? your question there right well that was my question for you i think is there a count is i mean i could just send it to you and you can decide but if it's the if it's the jpe that's signing it i would think it would be the jpe's council if there is one maybe there isn't one that hasn't been decided yet because the jpe doesn't exist doesn't uh, i won't say that doesn't isn't officially formed yet and does it have to be specified in this model supply contract no, it was just my question for you about who's going to get it. So, I mean, in other words, if we go to the town council, if we have both, you know, two, two, two ones for the communities uh, looking over right now, we form the JPE and we decide that we're going to take a third attorney to be for the JPE, then they're going to want to review it. Um, but if we have both the town councils look at it right now, it's more likely it's going to be one of them that's going to be the council for the JPE. Perfect. I mean, sound, yeah, I mean, I'm right thinking everybody? KP Law already represents both Pelham and Amherst. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that we have it in the JPA agreement already that it's possible for the council to be one of the towns. Yep. And again, we have a law firm that already represents two out of the three. So, okay, and, and they've reviewed this contract before for other communities. So, okay, you know, Alan Seawald ever reviewed, reviewed it? Paul? You know, as, I'm sorry, uh, Alan Seawald, not as far as I know, but potentially, I, I don't know. Okay, well, it's okay. nice that KP Law's already reviewed it, so they're yeah. probably not going to pick up that pen, that red pen. Well, they are. They're one of the most persnickety. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but we'll deal with it. I mean, I mean at least they're okay. they know what they, they they're familiar with this these issues, so they'll have we'll we'll manage with them. They they will have they'll have comments, so they always do. Okay. 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 Uh, and then okay, so we just had a, a couple of quick things, additional items here. Marlena, do you want to speak to the logo and the website? Yes. So um, the last time we spoke, you guys expressed an interest in a logo, but there was some question about 
what was going to come first, the Valley Green Alliance logo or the Valley Green Energy logo, um, you know, whether there would be an overarching Valley Green Alliance logo and the Valley Green Energy logo would need to be a cousin of that. And we can help you probably with one of those. Um, and I'm, I'd be happy to get started on it. It would be ideal if we had the logo in place because um, early because um, we have to draft these letters and send those to the regulatory review process. We also have to draft the exterior envelope that goes with the letters in the mailing and that will need um, a return address and a logo. If, if we don't have one in time, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll just put a box that says logo goes here or something like that and send that through the, the DPU. But it would be really ideal if we had something in place. Um, so I wanted to check in on that because I, re I recall from our last conversation, there was some uncertainty about which of those logos you wanted us to help with. Um, we typically create the program logo. Um, and, and so that, that would be kind of my inclination to, to help you with the program logo versus the overall Valley Green Alliance logo. But if you already have done some work in the direction of Valley Green Alliance and you need the program logo to look a certain way or you know, play well on a page or you know, somehow be derivative, that would be helpful to know. Um, if you want us to create the Valley Green Alliance logo, we, we could do that. Um, and then I suppose we could use that for the program. Um, I just, I need to check in on that because logos take a while to, you know, you have to get concepts together and then everybody has feelings about it. So I want to make sure we get that started for you guys. I'll just jump in and say, I think we should be going with the program just because I think it's the thing that we need to start moving forward, but I'm sorry, Andrew, go ahead. Oh, yes, yeah, so I have to go. And I think we should go with the alliance and then the program can just be a word underneath so that it's consistent logo. But um, that that's my say. And bye. Thank you. OK, well, all right. So how do others? I think so. Andrew and I seem to have different approaches here. So um, I'll start with the two community representatives. Chris, what do you think? I think you should go for the Valley Green Energy logo which um, is the program I, yeah the program right and i think we actually do want two different logos but boy this is off the cuff and i'm not an expert at this so just gut instinct okay and um so and i i think i am agreeing with you on that um count as well so tom the only thing that i'm worse at than names is logos so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh I'm I'm in favor of whatever is most expeditious and uh, gives us flexibility. So I'm, I'm if you guys uh, have a clearer path, I'm I'm totally with. You. Okay, Adele. I I vote for uh, Chris's uh, option. Okay. And Darcy? Yeah, I would, I guess I would agree with Andra, um, but my main point is that I would love to have the K Connecticut River somehow featured in the logo because it makes sense because we're the valley and it's between Northampton and Amherst. And it's like very classically considered, you know, sort of like the represent you know it represents the valley well there's nothing to say that we can't have the program logo and sort of use that elements of that <coughs> for the alliance logo and it just seems to me like we have to have the program move forward so for that reason i feel like there's more of a, a in terms of a timeline it's more important that we get the program logo going so um Darcy, given that, if we could use elements of the program logo to develop the Alliance logo, because then we'll have it and we that will actually give somebody else something to work with. I mean, because it won't be mass power choice developing the Alliance logo. So it would give somebody something to work with to start with and to tie them in. So it would that be, would you be okay with that? Yeah, it just has to be integrated so that people aren't completely confused by these two names, you know? Right. Yeah, well, it's Valley Green Energy and Valley Green Alliance. So, um, yeah, we can make sure that we, you know, I think it'll be, we'll be able to clarify that. So, 
Um, so Darcy, are you okay then with moving forward with the program logo? Um, yeah, as long as we get it in, you know, we, we have a plan to integrate them somehow. Okay, well, we can work on that because it won't be Mass Power Choice working on that. So that'll be on us. At the moment, we know what Valley Green Energy, the program is aiming for. Valley Green Alliance is, besides being the host of Valley Green Energy, it's still a little bit unclear. So mm -hmm. starting with Valley Green Energy makes more sense to me that, that way. Okay. And I love the idea of the river. Yeah, I do too. It's, a, it's the idea that kind of comes to my mind right away was somehow this kind of valley piece had to be in there and a river in there. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I agree. Yep. Although, again, I'm not going to make doing logos. <laughs> Next. I, mean, I, I was once heard that the logo should really be uh, completely empty of meaning so you can then fill it with your branding. So it should mean uh, nothing to anybody until you fill it. It's like, okay. <laughs> um, so, so this is this is very helpful, um, and the Connecticut River input is actually super helpful to provide some um, design guidelines. Are there any is there any discomfort or interest in uh, renewable uh, imagery in this? If we did some versions that had like a wind turbine or something, is that bad? Is that good? Some people have strong feelings they do want that. Some people have strong feelings they don't want that. Tom, you want to start? Tom, you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, I, again, I, it feels like it's complicated a little bit. And um, uh, so I don't have a strong feeling about it other than uh, just keeping the process moving. Okay, that's great. No opinion is also a fine answer. I'm just checking to see if there's a strong opinion. Okay. I think, yeah, I was going to say, if anyone has a strong opinion, could you digitally, electronically raise your hand? So, because we can't see everybody. So, Chris, go ahead. Okay. So, um, I've been involved with trying to get solar or wind and stuff inserted into different things. And it, I, I agree with Tom, it's kind of cumbersome. And it, I mean, all more power for you if you can do it. But on the other hand, um, might we want this logo to be more warm and cozy? We want this to draw people in. We yep. want this to be neighborhood, warm, cozy, energy, security, um, you know, all the good things that you want to be drawn to. Um, uh, I think it's probably it's more always where, where I would go with it. That kind of feedback is perfect, Chris. That's perfect, to the type of words and feedback designers want to hear. Okay. The neighborhood, warm, cozy, security. I'll pass those words along. Yep. I think, yeah. And to me, it seems like there should be some kind of a green element to it, you know, because we are Valley Green Energy. So, I do feel like there should be maybe not renewable symbols, but somehow it should hearken to that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it could just be even the use of green color. In a, right. In a exactly. Nice okay. Yep. All right. That's great. Thank you. So that, that helps with the logo. I think that gives me something to start with. Um, moving on from there, just with an eye on the time, I know you guys are sensitive to that. Um, if there are no other logo thoughts, the website, I wanted to touch on that. Um, I know you folks bought your domain, which is terrific. Um, we typically host websites for communities. Um, two big reasons why communities like us to do that um, is because we have customer self-service through the website. So people can enroll, opt in, change their, their program options, submit customer support queries all through the website. And we manage that when it's on our platform. Um, and also there's the regulatory compliance piece. There's a lot of stuff that just has to be updated on a regular basis. The DPU is always coming up with new ideas around what they want um, language to be or to not be. Um, there's clarifications that have to be made as, as market conditions change. And it's much easier for us to stay on top of that typically than for a municipality or for us to be constantly like chasing someone down. But um, 
if that isn't something that you're going to do, that you want us to do, then we should maybe talk about how to work together around the web content. There's not a requirement that the website has to be launched in time for the submission of everything to the DPU. Frequently, however, though, when, when we are hosting it, we do go ahead and launch it so that you can start to publicize the website address and we create you know, some basic background information about aggregation and the regulatory process. So if we're going to do that work, it would be good for us to know it. Um, so that's, I just wanted to touch on that. If we host it, the way it would work is you could own the, you own the domain and then you redirect it to our platform. So you could use that domain publicly, valleygreenenergy.com or however, whatever you wanted to use. But when, when people type it in, they would land on our, the website that we're hosting and the website address would then resolve to the actual underlying website address. So it wouldn't persist as valleygreenenergy.com in their address bar. It would say masspowerchoice.com slash something. Um, this is how all of our programs do it. We have these vanity web addresses for our programs in general and people just use them in all the marketing materials. Um, and then they land on masspowerchoice.com slash whatever. Um, so that's, that's functionally how it would work. Um, but I wanted to check in on that just so we know whether we're doing this work or we need to work with you in a different way. I would personally, I think it would be easiest to have the experience and I think it just makes more sense to have you do it. I think if the municipalities have to sort of work with this somehow on their own, or we have to create, like, it just is another complicated level and layer of coordination, which I don't think we want to get into. So I would say my vote would be to have you do it. Chris? You're here. Well said. Tom? You're here. Okay. Great. Good to know. Okay. Community Thanks. partners. I just want to make sure our community partners are okay with that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for that. So the last item on this screen, it's really just a heads up housekeeping. Um, we can get utility data from the utilities that give us a total number of basic service customers and load in the communities. We need that as part of the DPU filing. Utilities won't give it. If I ask you, the town, city or town has to send the request. I'll prepare the request for you and email them to you, Stephanie, and then just ask that you on behalf of Amherst, Christopher, Northampton, and Tom or whomever write appropriate from Pelham just emails them to the utilities and then that that data will come for us. So that could come from anybody in the city? Yeah, anybody. And anybody who on city letterhead is fine. They don't gotcha. they don't fuss about okay. it. Okay. And it's just you just have to email it just so uh, I'll I'll send you that instruction and it's it's a simple thing. So Okay, great. I think I'll that I'm around in a hurry. Thank you. Um, I think that's it for our list of things. Sorry for taking a little bit longer than than we had expected. No, it's I, that Very was fine, well. and I think we <laughs> we helped steer that a little bit <laughs> off the rails. So no, I think we did okay. And um, does anyone have any questions while we have folks here before we disband? Stuff. Go ahead, Tom. I said, good stuff. Thank you very oh. much. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Tom. So uh, so our next, I guess our next step is my question um, in terms of meeting with you again, because obviously there are things you're going to be working on, but there's some information you're going to be looking for from us. Just that last little bit of feedback, I think, in the outreach and education plan you wanted us to do. And then, Paul, you're going to forward me that information for the utility data to forward to the communities. Um, and I guess our next, would our next meeting then be to review the draft? Yeah, so we're going to send you, in addition to what you mentioned there, Stephanie, we're also going to send you the draft aggregation plan and then the draft supply contract. The supply contract will go on its own pathway, I think. The aggregation plan, I think, yes, that the next step would be to um, get any comments on that and then make the final decisions around the names and everything or the, the the names i think is actually the only outstanding thing um you'll find in the aggregation plan which i'll i'll send to you for comment and there's not so much really that you can have input around most of it is you know prescribed language by the dpu and 
if you read some sentences in there that you don't find are particularly um, uh, do a good job of actually conveying information, those aren't our sentences. <laughs> no, those are <laughs> the DPU says you will say this, and so we say it. Um, so, and I, I think that's the thing. And then, so yes, so if we were to get together, um, we'll get you those documents next week, early next week, and then whatever is a reasonable time frame for you. And then the, just the last thing is the um, is the letters, which take a bit will take a bit longer to put together. But if we get getting these everything else set, enables us to to do the letters from there. And then I'll get the I'll get the um, I'll get my designer working on logo concepts. It, she's typically she's she always has a full plate, um, so it might take her a couple of weeks to get some concepts to us. But I'll pass them along as soon as I have them, so you guys can start reacting to them. Okay, that'd be great. And we can have our in the meantime we can have our own meetings to follow up on some of these things separately. So. Okay, great. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. It's, it's a pleasure. Go ahead, Darcy. Just wondering what our plan is for our next meetings. Um, well, let's let um, Paula and Marlena, if you all, if you three want to just hang on just one moment, we can talk and then Marlena and Paul can go so they don't have to stick around for that. Because are, are you talking about them with them or just our own separate group? both you know like when we would have the meeting about the draft aggregation plan and right. so what? i think we don't we want to wait until we get some of that because we're going to have to give them information back too so i think let's us meet separately first and then um we can reach out and try to figure out a time a follow-up time okay so i won't put a date in the notes no, I wouldn't put a date in the notes. It won't, at least not for a meeting with Paul and Marlena quite yet. Okay. I can I can send a a poll out, you know, in another few weeks. So, is that okay with you and you two, Paul, Marlena? Yeah, it's it's, it's absolutely fine. I think just for your own planning. I mean, I think reviewing the plan, which is the next big thing, we'll send won't take too long it's not a very lengthy document it's i don't know 10 15 pages double spaced and there aren't so many things you get to change in there so that that shouldn't it's an important step and it shouldn't take all that long okay yeah it's quite different from the education and outreach plan which had a lot of spaces for you guys to insert stuff it's the aggregation plan's not like that okay and so we'll want to review it. And then, uh, I'm sorry, at that point, we'll want our legal counsels to review that as well? Or do you, we want to give feedback before we get to that point? Um, let's get it final before it goes to them. And I will say, they may want to review it. Typically, they don't, though. They review the contract. Yeah. But typically, they don't review the aggregation plan. They're welcome okay. to, but typically, they don't. No, nope, that's, that's, if that's standard procedure then let's go with that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, that could take forever so okay great good all right well then we'll just you know once we get the documents i think we can follow up with a time frame that works with us because we'll probably want to all come together and talk about it a little bit so and then we can get back to you on when we think is a good time to follow up and get back with you that sounds great okay Great, so thank you both. And um, Darcy, Adele, and Chris, if you could just hang on one moment, that would be great. Great, thank, okay. thank you all, good to see you all, take care. Thanks so much, Bye. you too, bye. bye. Okay, I just want us to sort of figure out a next step and also just to clarify where we are with who's doing what. So right now I'm sort of, um, I'm at the helm of this CCA process. So I will schedule that next meeting with Paul Gromer and group. Um, but I feel like this, like there's questions about the JPE, JPA, as well as the um, CCA that we need to sort of maybe come together about. So besides, having, besides having Alan look at this, and hopefully him and Rick, actually, it should go to both Rick and Alan again, because mm -hmm. they need to agree upon it. Right. What else is there, Stephanie? I mean, that's like the next for the JP, JPA, yeah. JPE. I think that's it. I mean, there were some things that came up about, you know, the, the logo piece. I mean, there's that. I don't know at what point we want to start talking about that. Um, 
I think we need to talk about the next steps because my fear is we get that signed and then what? Like we really need to be thinking about as soon as that contract is executed, it exists. So all our meetings and like we have to bring the board together, like how, what is the process by which we're going to do all those next step things? And I don't want to wait till the last minute. I kind of feel like I know we have it spelled out, but our respective executives need to appoint people, right? So there's like behind the scenes sort of things that have to happen. And I want to make sure that those things happen before we get to the point where we're signing a contract. Yeah. So that it's like in place and ready to go. For the, you're talking about for the JP. JP, yes. Yes, because we're, we're you sort of have these two tracks of things that are happening. And Chris is now sort of spearheading that piece. So just my own thought of having been sort of keeping this, running this along for a while, there's a lot to do for that piece. So I want to just make sure we're prepared. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, so, actually two, two months to get into the DPU actually surprised me. Um, that's faster than I expected. So yeah. that's nice. Great to hear. Yeah, Adele. Well, it sounds to me like um, <clears throat> we need two, two different meetings. We need a, a, a JPA meeting, which does not have to be open meeting law. And then we need um, another meeting of the CCA group, uh, which does follow open meeting law. Yes. And um, on that agenda, I would put the, the topic in addition to some of these other questions um, of the name, um, because at one point it was suggested that we go with Valley Green Electricity rather than Valley Green Energy to make it very clear. And so we just need to discuss whether we wanna make that change before all these documents get finalized. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would be one thing that I would put on that agenda, but then there are these other issues that were left hanging from today's meeting as well. Yep. Right, and we need, we're gonna need time to um, digest some of what gets sent. So we have to wait until they send the documents. Mm -hmm. And they said that would be next week. So I would say if we scheduled a meeting for two weeks, um, which would be the 28th. Mm -hmm. That'd be good. We good? Okay. So let's just say the next CCA meeting, which would be just us. And just to be clear, on Zoom now, I have two different links. One with Paul Gromer, because I have to list the attendees or presenters. So I've got two different links. One is our group without Paul Gromer and Marlena and the other and their staff and the other one is just us. So just be clear, <laughs> I'm sending the next one. It's not going to be the same link as today's meeting. As long as it's in the calendar announcement. Yeah, it, it will we, be. Could we go back to like scheduling the meeting for two hours instead of one just because we we just want to get this thing done and we have we have so many issues that we always have to leave at the end of a meeting. Um, yeah, I think this next one should be two hours. I don't want to make them two hours all the time because they're not always, it's not always necessary. But let's just say this one will be two, this next one will be two hours because I think we've, it's been a while and we've got a lot to cover. And it seemed, my recollection from earlier meetings that w one of the issues that the mass power choice told us that we needed to include in the CCA, which they didn't mention today, which I was surprised, was um, that we needed to, if we were going to uh, put forward any projects, any specific projects that the CCA was going to do, that it needed to be in the application. Um, and so we haven't had any discussion about that. Um, and I'm wondering if we wanna have, you know, at least a couple projects that we want to list as something that we would be doing so that we don't have to then go back to them some other time and say, you know, and some of this, you know, local energy advocates, one of the things that we do at all of our meetings is talk about possible projects. And so, we could bring that to the group and just say, well, these are some of the things we've been thinking about. And um, maybe that would be something that this group would also want to take on. So and my understanding, go, go ahead, Adele. 
the justification for the adder, the operational adder was that there were projects to be funded by it as well as administrative support. So um, that, that would be where we would have to specify the projects. Yeah, and I wondered, I thought that was maybe in relation to an additional adder was how I was like, I thought if we were requesting additional adder for projects that we were gonna have to be specific about what those were, that, that was my understanding. But we can ask, I mean, I, it's certainly not gonna hurt to have a discussion about those potential projects if we decide which would be the ones that we would wanna put forth immediately and then talk to Paul about how, like, how would that fit in or would it need to, or would that be an additional adder that would cover those specific things? We would just have to have very detailed information, I understand, is my understanding, if we're going to go with an additional adder. Do so. you think that we could just send them an email, you know, like, soon to ask them if that is something that we need to be working on? Well, I mean, I'm assuming we need to work on it anyway, but um, but if it requires think, additional adder for this projects, and if so, like maybe examples of projects that other towns have put forward. Um, are there are there examples? I mean, I think that that's kind of the cutting edge piece that we've got here is the idea of trying to do that. Right, well, maybe and, Cambridge, uh, yeah. maybe Cambridge, but uh, yeah. but Paul would know. Yeah, so let's just I'll I'll just send uh, an inquiry about that. I feel like that's been the sticking point all along. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, um, I mean, I I do remember that he asked. That was on that initial first presentation that he gave us. You know that if we if we were going to do projects, we'd need to identify them. Right. Um, okay. Right. Well, that's okay. But I, again, I don't know if that was in relation to an additional adder. That that response was in the you yeah. know the inquiry about having an additional adder for projects, where he said you have to have that project information. So I'll follow up with the question um, and to him. Also, um, how much detail about the project needs to be provided? That would be helpful to know. I mean, the problem with having to give details on any project is that you're stuck with that project and only that project. And you kind of basically applied that this is what we're going to do, and we're not doing more. Um, if there's any way we can make it, you know, the local piece to provide some examples without going into details, but I'm not sure the DPO will go for that. But yes, I think we need clarity from Paul <clears throat> on just how do we empower ourselves to do stuff under that local um, piece. How do we get our, you know, the, the broadest ability, the broadest capabilities without um, limiting ourselves? Agreed. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So we are All right. so we are on the 28th. On the 28th uh, time. So what time works for folks? I know for Tom, it's usually easiest for him to do earlier. So could we say like 9 to 11? Yeah. On the 28th? I, I have something at 11, so therefore 9 to 11 works for me. Yeah, that's fine for me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Then that is what we will do. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank Greatly you. appreciate it. And Adele, I don't did you, I don't know if you heard um, that I've been made director of sustainability. Yes, I. Um, <laughs> did you I, send I, me something? I can't remember. I did send you something. And um, I, I would, because we're collecting um, job descriptions, I would love to know, uh, you You did send me a job description, but I, I wasn't sure if, if your job description is going to be changing now that you're a director. I think the one I sent you is probably the updated one, but let me double check. I'll send you what Thank I you. have. Thank you. That's great. Recently. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Just great. for your efforts, I thought, you know, we're making progress here in the Valley, <laughs> slowly yes. but surely. That's wonderful. So, all right. Well, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. And um, I will see you all very soon. All righty. All right. Bye. Thanks again. Bye. Bye.